Hello, for the first CAD assignment we're going to create a robot. You can see here there are two deliverables. Number one is a 3D file, STL file. We'll look at how to create that. And a rendering, a JPEG file. We'll also create that. It will be created on uploading your STL file to Blackboard, your JPEG, and then also creating a robot that has at least 10 parts and using at least three materials. And you'll be graded on your design thoughtfulness and creativity and creating a good looking rendering. When you think of robots, a lot of times we think about the humanoid type robots and that might be an option for what you might model today. Or industrial robots, helpful robots, uh, these are probably the most common uh, that do all sorts of tasks, especially today repetitive tasks and more and more intelligent tasks. And here's an example, we're just using the primitive tools in Fusion 360, so torus, cylinder, box, the basic shapes to create a robot. And you'll do a rendering that looks something like this to save out. And there's another example of a robot. So without anything else, we'll jump right into Fusion 360. You can see here the two robots I just showed, modeled in Fusion 360 and you use your creativity to create your own robot. I'll give you a couple tips for this. In Fusion, I'm going to start a new design. And it's a good idea to save it from the get-go. So you can save it. And if you go back to your guide, it's uh, your name underscore robot. And by your name, it would be, you know, for example, Bob Smith underscore robot. Let's save that file. Now you've got a new file. And you can set your units. If you're comfortable in millimeters, you can leave that alone. You can change that to inches if you'd like. To create, we're going to use the primitives. And they're down here under the create menu. Box, cylinder, sphere, torus, coil, Pipe is a primitive, but you need to add a sketch. We'll probably skip on that unless you want to do something a little more advanced. You can try out the pipe. You'll have to sketch out a line first. And so we'll start with one of these. I'll do create box. Now in Fusion, you have to tell it where you want to start modeling from. And by default, there are three planes. A ground plane, a vertical, another vertical. I'm going to select the ground plane and I can model the box. And you can see from the tooltip here next to my cursor, it's a first corner and second corner box. So I can click, I'll start in the origin, pull away and create a box. Now I get some arrows. Uh, to pan, I press my middle mouse button straight down if you have a mouse. Otherwise down here there's a pan command. That's how I pan. I have arrows. And it's important to keep this dialog box open because after I say OK, those arrows will go away. So I can drag this height width. If I'd like to, I can type it in and be precise. Once I've got that, I can say OK. And there is my robot body. The first part, if I open up my bodies, I'll see that there is a body here. I can call this the main body, if you ever want to call that. Click and change the name. Now to add a material, I right click, so right click on my mouse brings up this marking menu and I can select appearance. So right click, appearance, that brings up all of my materials. In this materials library, yours might be looking something like this, you might have to open it up and scroll down to see the materials. You want to find a material that you like and be creative, there are all sorts of materials that are in folders, for example the paint folder. If I open that up, there are all sorts of paints, glossy, metallic, and so on. I'll open up one of these. Oh, we'll do metallic this time, metallic. And to add a material to a body, I simply drag and drop and let go. And that adds the material. If I want to change it, I can drag and drop until I find the material I like. You can just use these default materials if you want to. You can always edit these and customize them uh, to your liking. So I close on that. Now I'm going for at least 10 parts, so this is not enough of a robot yet. 
keep going. Ten parts is a minimum, it's just a guide. So I'll create some additional boxes. Now that I have something modeled, I can pick one of these default warp planes or any flat face of the model. So I'll pick the top here. And I'd like to look straight down at this top. If I orbit around, I'm holding shift in my middle mouse, I can orbit around and see I am working on that top plane. I can click up at the top right here, the top of the view cube, and I can look directly at this. And I can put a top on this robot. Head there. I can click the little tiny house view to go back to a main view. view. And again, I don't click OK yet. There's a couple things I need to adjust. First off, the operation is set to join. And I don't want that. That's going to connect like glue this box to the box below it. I want to keep this as a new body. You can see the material change to let me know it's connected or not. Uh, new body. And I want to adjust these arrows and the heights. So I can change this, I can change the width. I can come over to my view cube, look at this from a different angle, and make sure it's centered, and add that box. And once I'm okay with it, everything looks good, and only then I can say okay. Notice the arrows go away, and I'm left with that box. Now I can repeat the last command. I right click, appearance, and I'll add an appearance for the top part of this robot. I'll drag and drop this guy, that green, and I'll say close. Starting to look a little more like a robot. I can zoom out by using my scroll on my mouse. Scroll it forward and backwards to zoom in and out. Press it down to pan. And I'll create a cylinder. And to learn a new command, the move command, I'm going to create this off to the side. So I'll do a cylinder. I'm just going to put this on the ground plane for now. And I'll just model the cylinder off to the side. It doesn't matter where exactly, just off to the side. This will be a leg for the robot say OK. And there it is. I've got a leg. I can right click now and say move. And you can see it's set to move bodies. So I can move this body. And as I hover the mouse around, it jumps the pivot point of the move around. And that's fine. I'll just click the top for now. And I get this move gizmo. It has arrows. I can move it in one axis. I have these white squares I can move in a plane. And I have these big arrow or these big circles I can rotate if I want to. So I need to change the view a bit to make sure I'm getting this in the right spot. So I'm going to move this over here, looking at the top view. Then I'll go to the front view. I can get to the front view quickly by clicking this little arrow on the front here. I can see I'm in the right view. And there. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit for this exercise. We're not being super precise, we're just kind of like sketching in 3D. So those legs are kind of long, I'm a little bit short. Say OK. And that's the move commands. And now I've got a leg to the robot. Now I can right click again and I can say appearance. And I'll give this an appearance here, drag that on, say OK. And now I'll notice I've got a couple things here. I should probably be naming these as I go along. Uh, up at the top, I've got the head. I can name that. This down here is a leg. Again, remember, these are all in the bodies folder for now. Now that I've got this one leg, I could make another cylinder, but that would take some time. It would be quicker to copy the one I've already made and paste it over to the side. So to do that, I find it in this bodies menu. Make sure you know which one it is. You can highlight it or name it like I did. If I right click that, one of the options is to copy. So I can copy that leg. I can right click again and I can say paste. And now I get this little arrow, just like the move command, I can move it into place. And of course I might want to change my view to center it properly, something like that. And say OK. Now I've got two legs. Uh, for the price of one. I just modeled one and copy and paste to make another one. You can see it's got a copy right here. Leg one and leg two. Alright, so let's give this guy a couple of arms and I'll repeat that process very similar again. I'll do a cylinder. 
Uh, this time I'll model it off to the side here. And I can change the diameter. It's a little bit thick for an arm, so I can drop that down, change the height, and say OK. And there is an arm just off to the side. I can right click, find the appearance, and I'll give this a material. I can find a material that's down here, or I can use an existing material I've already used in this design. Drag and drop, set close. Now I'll right click and I'll find my move command again. I'll select this arm and I'll need to position it by looking at some different views. You can see it's off to the side here. I want to line it up in the middle of the robot there. Then I might want to rotate it something like this and then use the planar move to actually put it inside the robot a little bit and say OK. And now you can see I'm holding shift on my middle mouse button to orbit around. I can see I've got the robot arm there. It's called body 5. I'm going to call this arm. Right click and I can say copy. Right click again and I can say paste. And I've got a copy. You can use the arrow to move it over. Rotate it all the way over like this. Use the planar move to drop it in position. And again, close counts. It's like 3D sketching. I can look at some different views to make sure it's OK. Once I'm happy with it, I can say OK. And now I've got two arms. Let's have a little fun. Use some of the other create primitives here. We have a torus. I'm going to put a torus right on the belly of this robot. I'll click on this front face and I'll change it to a right view so I can look directly at it. One little trick in Fusion, if I want to center something, if I hover over like let's say a midpoint, I'm not clicking, just hovering my mouse, and pull away I get a little dashed line. It helps me know I'm in the center point. I get another one there. Little tricks to help you. So I click again. There is the torus. And one thing you can see it's doing a little tricky because it overlaps with another body, by default it's picking the cut operation and that's going to cut it out. Maybe you want that look and that's great. If you don't, you can change this to new body. And now it's going to be its own new body I can apply a material to. If I did join, it's going to glue it to the body. So I'll do a new component, I'm sorry, new body, and say OK. And now I can right click and add an appearance to that. So I'll drag and drop here. Say close. <clears throat> and we'll add up here a coil. I'll put that on the top, on the head. I'll do a top view. So I'm looking right at it. Do my little trick here where I hover over the midpoint. Line it up. I'll go to my home view to see it in 3D. I can adjust that coil. All sorts of cool things you can do in the dialog. I can you know, add or decrease the number of times it spins around. I can change the diameter, change the height. And one thing right now, it's cutting because it sees an overlap. So it wouldn't give me much of a model there. It would just give me a little cut. And just that little piece. That's not what I want. I want to actually have this coil here. So I'm going to change the operation to new body. That makes a new coil right on the top. Let's say OK. Right click and I can add its appearance to this. Drag and drop. Alright, last but not least, this robot needs maybe a mouth and some eyes. So I can create a cylinder. I'll put it on the face of this. Navigate to the front view here. Find that midpoint and come down. It's got a lot to say. I'll give him a big mouth. Go back to my home view. If I drag this out, you can see it's joining by default. If I drag it backwards, it's going to do a cut. And you can decide what works better for you. I'm going to do a cut for this one. Say OK. And I'm going to give it two eyes. I'll do the same method. I'll do cylinder. Click on the face. And I'll do one right up here. 
I'm going to type in these dimensions so I can do something similar for the next one. Uh, instead of positive one, maybe I'll do a minus two. Minus two. And again, I'll do create cylinder. And there we go. I'm going to line it up with the center point of this. See there's a little dashed line for me. And I did a click. I can do eight, the last one, and minus two. Say so, okay. And isn't that fun? It's kind of like working with Legos. You have basic shapes, you can build up you know, all sorts of cool things. Uh, if I want to, one other quick trick, if I go to appearance, the default we've been using so far is to apply an appearance to a whole body. Uh, but if I want to, I can apply it only to faces. Now I can add very specifically material just to certain faces. If I don't have that checked, you can see it's going to apply this material to the entire head. And it's going to give me a little warning. Do you want to remove? Let's say cancel. So I can apply just a face. That's a little trick. And there it is. So I've got the robot. Good to hit save. Make sure you've got at least 10 parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can count these uh, face, nine, 10, 11. So I'm good. <clears throat> could add some little feed and some other things. Have fun with this and be creative. You're, you're going to get points on creativity also. So the deliverables, now that it's saved, you have to submit an STL file as well as a JPEG. The STL file hands down the easy one. STL file is for 3D printing. All you do is come to the main level on your browser. That selects everything, everything in the model. If I right click on that, I can say save as STL. Save as STL. Only a couple things you need to change here. One is to make sure send to print to three send to 3D print utility is not checked. Because you're not going to 3D print this now, you're just going to make the file a 3D printer would need. Make sure that is not checked. That's the only thing you need to really worry about here. Go ahead and say OK. That's going to bring up a uh, sh folder to save your STL file. So go ahead and save that, and you can give it your name, your name underscore robot uh, dot STL. If it has some little versioning in here, you can delete that out. And go ahead and save that, your name underscore robot dot STL, save. And you'll upload that STL file to Blackboard. The second step is to get a JPEG out of this. And to do that, we're going to change environments, go from the model over to the render environment. And here in the render environment, uh, a couple steps. You want to, number one, zoom out and get a nice view of the robot. Step number two is come to your scene settings right here. Click on that. And we're only going to get into a couple settings here. We'll look at others as we go forward. Uh, the background is solid color. Change that to an environment. And then in the environment library tab, which is the second tab over, you can pick any of these environments. They take a moment to load. You can double click. And that's going to put your robot in an environment. That makes it look more realistic because it's going to reflect the environment around it. So any of these are fine. Pick the one that you would like. You double click and wait. Think of it like loading a web page. And you can see that your robot will then be in an environment. So pick one that makes sense uh, for your robot, what it's doing. I did a humanoid type robot. You can do all sorts, a car type robot or industrial robot. I say close. Once you've got that environment, there is one more step to do. And that is to create a rendering. So we click this little teapot. All sorts of settings here. Go ahead and leave yours alone. I've been messing with mine, so I need to click Cloud Render, but leave yours alone. It should look something like this. Already set to Cloud Render, and click the blue Render button. And that's going to take a, a moment. You can see it here. It's rendering. It's going to process. It'll probably say it's 
in the queue and then give you a time uh, until it's done. So you wait for that to be done. I'm going to show you one that's already done. It's over here. The one I've already got done here. To show you the step, I click on the done rendering. So this one's all complete. And there is a download button. Very important. Download. I click on that download button and that's going to save out a file, a PNG file, which is fine. That's all I need. It's an image file. So robot, and again, you want to do your name, whatever that is, and then robot, and a PNG file is great. And once you've got this saved out, this specific file, you will then upload to Blackboard, and that will complete this assignment.